Extreme Collectibles here with a question for you. What makes somebody an extreme collector? There's a lot of different things I think that may or may not qualify you for that, but one of the things I think is you see a piece of a stat a piece of a statue, a POS. This is not a POS. It is a POS. It's a piece of stat. Well, this is a POS. This is a piece of statue. Anyway, it's <laughs> you better buckle up. It's going to be a nasty review. Have you ever seen a statue and you're like, I don't know who that is, I don't know what that is, but I need it because it's badass looking. So my first introduction to Dragon Ball Z was not with this, but with a previous statue that I'm also reviewing, and I don't know which one's going to air first, but let's dive into this custom cell from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Extreme Collectibles here with custom quarter scale dragon. I don't know why I pointed. Custom quarter scale Dragon Ball Z realistic cell. So, this is a character from Dragon Ball Z, which I know a little bit about, not much. I do know the character Cell is a manufactured character, so he's created essentially uh, in a. I don't know if it was in a lab or not, but his name is Cell because he gets the, uh, the cells of some of the most powerful uh, beings in the Dragon Ball Z world, uh, Earth, on that Earth. So he is the second character I bought from uh, a Dragon Ball Z line, two out of four, and I'm not planning on buying the other two, from one of my favorite custom groups. And one of the things about this custom group is they love big bases. They absolutely love big bases. Quite a few of the things I've reviewed on here, they're just massive. And second thing, tons and tons of switch outs. So let's start talking about that right away because there's a lot to go over. So first, it actually has two bases in one. Obviously the one you're looking at here, but the inner base, as you see here, can actually come out, which is a real cool space saver. And right there you can see the other character I have, and you can kind of compare the bases. They're very, very similar in size. So that's one switch out. And then a lot of other different options on here. First of all, you see the wings in the back. They are actually removable uh, in case you didn't want him as wide. There's not really anything you can put in the keyhole, but it is an option to display it differently. Also on the back, he has two different tail options. So here you see his nubbin. Cute little guy. And then you see the massive tail. I was really trying to figure out how to put that in a that's what she said joke, but I've been up for 18, 19 hours. And, but uh, some other switch outs that he has is his hands. So first you see here, he has two closed fists. Or you can display him with his balls. Then his portraits. So first you have what I call his mass portrait. And here are a couple different shots of it, because I'm not going to review this portrait, but just to kind of give you an idea, you see the sides, and then the top, and then you have this closed mouth, kind of stoic, unmasked portrait, and finally the open mouth, screaming, unmasked portrait. And another thing this uh, commissioner likes to do is uh, about half of his pieces, maybe I, I'd have to sit down and look, have light-up features, which I don't ever use light-up features, but it's kind of cool to have. So here you see his balls and eyes lit up, which I'm trying to think of a kick in the nuts joke that kind of goes with balls and eyes lit up, but we better get rolling because there's a lot to cover. Came in one large box that uh, U.S. Customs tore apart for me as a present. As you see here, they even kept half the art box and didn't repack everything. So unfortunately I had some breakages. I've, I've gotten everything fixed except one wing that's hanging down in the back here. It's hanging on by a thread, literally. I can't get it fixed, so I don't know what I'm going to do. 
But uh, thanks, U.S. Customs. Always there for us taxpayers. Uh, big box. Uh, the different pieces included the base, the inside and the outside are one. All of these pillars uh, are another piece. His body minus his wings, tail, arms, and head is another piece. So one of the issues I'm going to have, which we're going to talk about in the concept and design, is so many different great switch outs. One of the problems here with the switch out are the arms are in by a long skinny peg. That's all that connects them and there's some weight uh, and some physics that actually hold them in, but it's very difficult to get them in. It doesn't snap in easy, so I think there's a missed opportunity there. Magnets would have been much better. Maybe they avoided those because of the light up features. I'm not sure. I'm guessing that's why. And then also you see a little bit of a seam line on the back of each of the heads. It's very similar, a little bit of a gap there. So a few opportunities with the design, but where the design was awesome was the fact that you have that smaller base and the bigger base. Here it's actually a little uneven, which you're gonna see in the pictures, but that's because I have it on a turntable. Uh, there are padding uh, underneath it to, to raise up a little pads like this. I don't know if you can see those in the camera. And then it did come with uh, extra light-ups too, which is kind of nice, in case one breaks. Cost on this was right around 1000 I think, then shipping was 50, or no, 1200 US-ish, and then shipping was quite a bit because it's a very heavy big box from China. Uh, ES is 25, so very, very rare, which is obviously a good thing if you're a collector. But let's jump into the concept and design. So, a lot going on here with Cell. I assume this is his temple, it's a battleground. Uh, the pillars kind of have that temple effect and then the battleground because it's scorched, uh, it's damaged, it's broken, and he's sitting there in a victorious museum pose. He's holding his balls like most of us do once we are victorious or when we're sitting on the couch. And depending what portrait you use, he's screaming in victory. He's still got his tail pose to, uh, you know, F up some more op opponents. I really, really like it. Each of the different switch outs kind of tell the same story, but they tell it a little bit differently. Um, so you still get the same concept. As I said, the, the design, some really, really good things that just knock the design out of the park from the removable base, uh, from the light up features, from the so many different switch outs. So I'm a fan. I, I like what they tried to do. I like the execution. I think it's successful. Uh, great job. And let's start on the base. The paint and sculpt here. So first of all, the sculpt in some areas, especially on the outside, looks okay. Uh, I'm a big critic of really good concrete or gravel. Some of the areas on here just look good. They don't look great. It doesn't look cheap or anything like that. But what I love, especially around the outside, and it's on the inside too, there's this weird blue paint mixed in where all the cracks are that almost looks like it's glowing. It may be hard to tell on the pictures, but it's, it's neat. I like how they did it. It really makes it pop and it gives it almost this kind of magical feel. Uh, magic. It, it's neat. It's really neat. Uh, the pillars, there's some cracks and wear in those. Again, to kind of make you feel this was a huge battle with a lot of magical powers going on. The inside of the base is really cool. First of all, the middle is kind of sloped in, uh, almost like it's bashed down from some globe or uh, round magic and then you see all those different cracks and grooves and that blue paint that just makes it pop is continued throughout there. there. To me it's almost a shame because I love this the huge base. I like it big. That's what she said. And it's it's just sad because there's no room to display it because it's 23 by 23 by 24 I think with the tail uh, as far as dimensions and size. But uh, I love the thought. But I don't like his feet. Um, I'm not a fan of the paint. It looks kind of bland. The shape, obviously, I assume that's decently uh, conceptually accurate. This is a realistic cell. It's not necessarily a cartoonish one, so I, I, I like a different take. I don't know how I could have done it differently. Then moving up, he kind of has this armor and this dull br uh, br or dark brownish color. It's kind of like armor, and then you see on his knee pads, uh, right underneath that, maybe that's his skin that's being protected, or maybe it's just another layer of clothing or armor. And then moving up, you see on his thighs kind of this green armor that he has throughout that almost has this 
skin-like texture to it, so it could be his skin. I'm not sure how he is as a creature, but that skin-like texture with those greens and browns, they are found all throughout him. They're found on the uh, top of his cone heads, on the back of his legs, on his wrist gauntlets, on his biceps, just kind of everywhere. Then look at his nuts area. He has a great uh, cup to protect him from anyone that would, you know, throw some dodgeballs down there. That's what he may be doing. Maybe he's playing dodgeball. Maybe that's what Dragon Ball Z is about. Because uh, the other character I have has a ball, too. I mean, yeah, let's play, mother... And then uh, the other guy, he's throwing one, I think. So uh, it's kind of cool. Dodgeball. Dragon Ball. Dodge Dragon... Dodgeball? Have you ever seen the movie Dodgeball? I think it's hilarious. Uh, one of the funniest lines. Necessary? Is it necessary I drink my own urine? No, but I do it because I like the taste and it's sterile. And now we're talking about drinking urine, so we better talk about cell more. So look at his torso again. Very, very cool. I like how the armor is a little bit different. It almost looks like a living organism. They use some really cool paints. Uh, almost reminds me of a swamp or a, a vegetative living organism. And then on the top, he has these breastplates and shoulder pads that almost look like real armor, and they're a different color and different texture than the rest of it. And then again, looking at his hands, uh, very cool detail. I like his nails, the good sculpt on his hands, and kind of this different green than what his living armor is. The balls look fantastic. His balls look really good. Those are good looking balls. Uh, looking at his wings, they look really cool in the pictures. They are a little bit of a cheaper material, these outer coverings here. I wish they would have done a little more variation in the paint, but it looks really cool. A few different designs in the sculpt. And then his other wings, I don't know if they're plastic or resin, but they have that see-through appearance when anytime you put light on them, they really just pop. I like it. I hope I can get that wing repaired or a replacement or something. Then looking at his tail here, again, it has that same texture that his armor did. So uh, going all the way from the front to the back with a few different shades of green and blacks in there. So maybe someone can educate me. Maybe that is part of him. Maybe it's not an armor. It's part of his living body, part of his skin. So let me know. Then moving on to his portrait. So first, I, I like on the outside, kind of he has these earmuff armor parts that are a little bit of a faded green. I wish it would have been more of a kind of in your face popping green, but a little bit of texture on there and a little bit of paint variation. Then on his open mouth portrait here, great job on his open mouth. Good sculpt on the teeth, the tongue. The paint is really well done. I like the color they use for his face. And his eyes are the solid black color. And then he has that chin strap that's very similar to what his sides of his ear looked like. And then look at his neck. Some really cool texture and you can almost see whether it's his neck bones or veins or whatever that is. Very cool. So lots of different colors, lots of different things going on here. Believe it or not, there's not a lot of what I would say sculpt. Um, not a ton of detail, but again, it's a realistic take on a cartoon character. So there's a lot of freedom in the art direction here. And overall, it looks badass. So very pleased with the piece. Going to display him with just the small base. I don't even know what I'm going to do with the big base because the box is destroyed. So I, I can never sell this guy. Unless someone wants to come here and pick it up. Uh, I was thinking about doing a uh, raffle, like when I hit 5,000 subscribers, where you can pick anything. With like maybe I'll, you know, take out five that you can never pick. Uh, but that would be really exciting. I'm really thinking about doing something like that. But a uh, great piece, uh, great art direction, a uh, few opportunities on the design, a few opportunities on the paint, at least in my opinion but definitely a keeper, especially the fact that it's an ES of 25. That is so, so cool. So let me know, A, what you think of this guy, B, what statue you saw that you knew nothing about the character uh, and you just really wanted to get into it because of that statue or you went ahead and bought it anyway. That's always cool to hear what you guys have to say. 
But in the meantime, hit that subscribe, hit that bell, hit that like or that dislike, uh, and I will talk to you soon. I don't know why I keep pointing. Is it still rude to point?